in terms of understanding Afghanistan, I mean, there, there are many ways in which it's different than ways it's similar, but also ways it's very different from, from Central America. And I think one key thing is that, you know, in Latin America, U.S. intervention has been about paralleling and either directly or indirectly protecting U.S. corporate interests, United Fruits, Standard Oil, the great mining interests. For, you know, over 100 years, they've had direct connections and they've called on the U.S. Marines, et cetera, et cetera. So there's that old tradition there. In Central Asia, there are no great U.S. investments. There are no great economic concerns driving the policy there. What there is is a political logic. At first, Afghanistan was about getting to Iraq because of 9-11, because al-Qaeda did have sanctuary in Afghanistan. The Bush administration used the intervention in Afghanistan as a trampoline to get to Iraq and to try and confuse the issues. Now, I think fundamentally, you know, what the situation is that Obama ran on getting out of Iraq by covering himself domestically in the political theater of the United States by promising to be tough on the good war. And he performed that myth to the point where he now has to act on it. And I think he know we see that the elements in his administration know that this is an absolutely lost cause. There is no way they can win in Afghanistan. The Russians at least held the cities in the south. Mm. We don't even hold the cities in the South anymore. And you have Eikenberry, former general who ran the war less than two years ago, saying this is crazy. You can't escalate. Uh, you have Biden saying we should, uh, you know, we, we should cover our cover ourselves with a fig leaf of counterterrorism and drone strikes. So they clearly within the administration know this is doomed. But I think Obama lives in mortal fear, like all Democratic presidents, of being called a wimp by Republicans and losing swing states. And so I suspect that we will see when he announces next Tuesday. Uh, that he's going to, in Obama style, escalate, but not too much, and also promise a, an exit strategy in Goldilocks, kind of, this one's too hot, that one's too mm -hmm. cold, this one's just right. And it's a disaster, and there's no way they can win in Afghanistan. And the problem is that the, you know, the crisis of war and state breakdown will uh, reverberate out deeper and deeper into Pakistan, deeper into Iran, deeper into Central Asia, and just destabilize that whole region more deeply for yet another generation to come. And then, of course, throw in the, the coming uh, uh, climatological tests for places like India and Pakistan. And it's a very, very insane strategy. The, the way I look at this, because sometimes we go into why are they not learning from the past? Let's say, for example, Vietnam. So it's two things going on here. Yes, one is that, look at this, you're not going to win this. It, it happened in Vietnam, it's going on in Iraq, it's going on in, in Afghanistan. But also you need to understand, we have a very interesting component in our capitalist society, the, the war industrial complex. You have some people here, they don't care if they're going to lose the war because they're making money. Mm. So it, the issue is not if we're going to win or we're going to lose this war. They make him billions of dollars like Dick Cheney. So doesn't matter. The kicks are dying. We're killing people. We're going to lose this one, but we're becoming rich. That's the, 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 this is where we need to look.